specialised a machine that could solve any problem. It didn't just do one thing, it did everything. It, it wasn't just programmable, it was reprogrammable. Mm. Is that your idea behind Christopher? Well, human brains can compute large sums very quickly. Even Hugh can do that, but I want Christopher to be smart. To make a calculation and then uh, to determine what to do next. Like a person does. Think of it. Electrical brain. A digital computer. Digital computer. Hmm. One and two. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Put on the brakes, put on the brakes. Welcome, welcome, boys and girls, children of all ages. Hoofties, poofties, bung eyed eppers, right and left wing wackos. Woodchucks and chuckettes, kings and queens of the Northeast Kingdom to another version, oh, and little dogs too, and uh, to another version of It's News to Us. Oh, you sappy, now you're gonna get sappy. Oh, take a big sigh. Oh, life is so tough when you're a little dog. <laughs> He's toast. He's just a weasel. <laughs> to another version of It's News to Us. Now, okay, you've got your own camera. Don't hide under the desk. No, you don't. Get out there. Oh, oh, there. Go. There you go, you fool. <laughs> Sneezy. <laughs> Let me adjust the dog cam. You just, uh, just stay away from them curtains. What do you think this is, the Wizard of Oz? That's perfect, Steve. Perfect. I was watching the Wizard of Oz. It was on the other night, as a matter of fact. Oh, really? Yeah, on, uh... Turner Broadcast System, TBS, something like that. And, okay, uh, back to you. Thanks. Oh, you are watching the opener. You are watching It's News to Us. We're Newport's oldest TV news watchers now. We got the disclaimers and everything. We got adult themes in adult language. Uh, not really. We don't do much cussing. No mo. And uh, but we're the Bronze Age Invisible Sky God. Gonna beat you, forgive you, beat you, forgive you. And here's our president. All hail President uh, Dementia Joe. We'll get to him later. Get out of my White House! And it looks like that stupid dog's in trouble again. You know, in Washington, D.C., the laws say that uh, after the first bite, you're in big trouble. But it doesn't apply to El Presidente. We're all inclusive here. We cater to men, women, men, women, and women, all 57 genders. Defund the police? No, defend the police, all right? <laughs> when you need them when you call them and you need them you need them okay and when you're busted up on the side of the road and your car's a pile of smoking twisted metal you'll be happy to see that cop and uh here we attack ideas not people try it sometime by the way you got two new subscribers to your channel i'll be damned yeah two maybe in 20 years <laughs> i don't know 20. how many you've got but you've got quite a few you want me to check i'll check for you uh, if you want, yeah. And yeah, I'll, I'll be over on the other screen for a second. So go right ahead and talk away. I'll let Mac in entertain us. In 20 years, we'll, uh, we'll be popular. <laughs> Anyways, uh, thanks to the boss for printing this up uh, for me. Uh, here's some, this is the, some Bidenisms from just this week. I mean, th th this guy is burnt toast. And let's face it, this is a machine, okay? The machine elected this guy. It wasn't the people. And, by the way, they're having that recount out in Arizona. They're going nuts. Now, we saw this in 2016 uh, when Jill Biden, uh, not Jill Biden, when, um, what's her face there? H from the, Gre the Green Party girl. Oh, oh, Jill Stein. Jill Stein, yeah, the doctor. When, uh, when she, lo uh, she lost, uh, she wanted to do a recount in the county where Detroit is. So uh, she got together and uh, they said, that's it, all right, we'll do a recount when she was running against, uh, running against Hillary and Trump. So they do a recount in 2016 in the Detroit area, and lo and behold, they found well, uh, they found well over uh, the number of registered voters. They had like two times the number of registered voters. So they quickly gave that one a good leaving alone, mister. I'll tell you, oh, geez. So we're supposed to believe that this geezer, who was so bad during the debates and the primaries, he was telling people to turn on their record player so that the kids could have, uh, poor kids could uh, listen to uh, words. 
And it's like, what the hell? Everybody on stage is looking at him like, what, a record player? You know? Uh, the phonograph. Turn on the phonograph. Oh, you know, the Victrola. The Victrola. Yeah. Victrola. Yeah, hey, uh, Victrola. <laughs> Crank it up. Let the kids listen to uh, words. And, uh, and so, and then not only him, but Camelback Harris, uh, the, the woman didn't even get. <laughs> you, mean, you mean Camel Toe, but Camelback? Yeah, whatever. Oh, she, okay. uh, she, she did so poorly in, in Iowa. I mean, and that was another thing. We didn't even know who won Iowa. We probably still don't because they had this new caucus system devised where uh, the caucus people would put it on their, uh, on their iPhones and then it would go to somewhere and get thrown into a barrel and mixed up and next thing you know, Pete Buttigieg comes out and declares himself the winner. And who designed the system for the caucuses in Iowa? Lo and behold, it was a company that had Pete Buttigieg, his sister-in-law ran the company. Ha. Huh. So we roll into New Hampshire for the primaries, and and uh, of course Bernie uh, Bernie and Liz Warren won because that's who the people wanted. They didn't want Biden. They sure the hell didn't want Harris. You, I don't think your name was even on the ballot. And uh, and and now we're finding out too. They're doing. They're gonna. The New Hampshire legislature is gonna take this up because. Uh, somebody asked for a recount in Wyndham, New Hampshire, the tiny town of Wyndham, and they found out that four candidates uh, lost 300 votes each. It's like, wait a minute, how could this happen in a small town, you know? So they started looking into it, and next thing you know, people are getting embarrassed. So now they're looking into the whole state, and the same thing with Arizona, too. They're doing a recount as we speak. And boy, oh boy, the Democrats said, no, 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 you can't do it. Oh, the Democrats, I should say, the machine, okay? The machine, the deep state, the government, you know, the, the military-industrial complex that Eisenhower warned us about. They, uh, they're, they're the ones who, who did that. They're all like, oh, no, no, we're going to judge to get a temporary restraining order. We don't want anyone to count the votes. So they got a TRO, and then uh, they brought it to a bigger judge, and he's all like, what, are you kidding me? Uh, you know, no, this is the United States. We can recount the votes if you want, you know, as long as you guys pay for it. So they're checking. They're not just recounting the votes. They're checking um, um, against signatures and stuff like that. Because let's face it, black, white, poor, rich, something like almost 80 percent of americans think you should have some kind of id to vote okay and uh, they get down south there and saying in georgia oh yeah we're oh, jeez louise we can't we can't have ID. these people are you know these black people they're like little children they don't they don't uh, get ids even though the state gives them out free they don't have ids they never rent cars they never buy booze they never cash checks they never buy property they don't buy cars they don't get car insurance oh they never have ids they're like little children don't you know it's an insult to everyone involved well, you know Louis Gomert, remember him? Oh, Louis Gomert, yeah. They asked him if he had any ID, and he said, about what? <laughs> <laughs> He's just as bright as Hank Johnson, man. Those two together. There he goes. He's hey. going to hide. He thinks he is, but his yep. tail's sticking out. <laughs> you damn fool. <laughs> him and Hank Johnson should be in the, uh, the Mensa Hall of Congress. More like Densa. Yeah, and uh, it's just insane. And uh, Mad Maxine Waters, I'd throw her in there too. And, oh, did you see where Saturday Night Live doesn't want to uh, play with Elon Musk? No, I didn't see that. Yeah, they're having Elon Musk on as a guest host, and the, uh, the kids don't want to play with him because they don't like him. It's like, what the hell? Oh, boy. He, he's an African-American. <laughs> oh, did you see Bill Gates' latest request? He's getting divorced, you know. Yeah, yeah. And you know yeah, what been... He says, I, I, Melinda and I should have some privacy over this. <laughs> yeah, but we're supposed to listen to him when it comes to vaccine, a college dropout. Yeah, and he's going to uh, he's going to invade our privacy, but, oh, we got to, oh, I want my privacy. Oh, yeah. yeah. Nice going, Bill. Oh, yeah. If, uh, that was another thing. I, said, I mentioned that at the Vermont Liberty uh, rally on Sunday which we were blessed with to have decent weather. It was a little bit nippy, but it was sunny and it was beautiful outdoors. I said, you know, if they wanted people to take this vaccine, they should give it out anonymously. You know, why are you keeping a database? What's up with that, you know? Why do you need that? It should be part of your medical records and that's it. 
Yeah. Just yeah. Like what happened to the, the HIPAA doctor, laws? If I go to the doctors and I get, I got my shingle shot, because I just got shingles on the roof of my house, so I don't need any more shingles. I got metal. Well, well and then you don't need one. You've got, you got a metal shot. <laughs> so it should be just part of your your uh, medical records, protected by HIPAA, right? You would. One would think. Uh, but that's all being thrown out the window. And it, and who, again, it's not the Democrats, it's the friggin' lefties that are pushing for this vaccination compliance. It's like, F you, no. And I'll get to that later. You mark my words, when July 4th rolls around and fewer people than what Governor Scott wants vaccinated comes through, he's going to keep things a tight lid on things. This is going to be his excuse. Well, did you notice, I, I, I mentioned this to one of the reporters that I keep in touch with. Uh, did you notice how it changed? It went from when we get below the X amount of cases, then we're going to open things up, right? Right. Now it suddenly morphed from cases into vaccinations. Yeah, I, I noticed, yeah. How's that work exactly? Well, well, we don't know if we we can get the herd immunity, you know. <laughs> yeah, I got your herd immunity. I got, hoof, I got hoof and mouth disease. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and blue tongue too. <laughs> oh, and Joe Biden's on. Uh, he's on record saying too that uh, if you make if you make up to four hundred grand a year, Terry, yeah, you don't have to pay any taxes. None. Oh, okay. He didn't right. say he didn't say we're not going to raise the tax rates. Oh, and that's another thing. We're, we're going to raise the ta corporate tax rates. And it's like they never they never mention anything about the loopholes. You can raise taxes all you want, but these companies aren't going to pay anything because of the loopholes. Exactly. And where's Bernie? Yep. Bernie should be out front saying, you know, never mind raise just raising the tax rate. We got to get rid of the loopholes that allow these people like Amazon and, and Bill Gates and stuff to uh, to make a damn fortune with carried interest rates and stock options and all this other crap. Do you remember just about the time Obama got elected, McCain Feingold got passed, and guess who ran their 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 boatloads their truckloads of money through a one loophole? was the Democrats, and the Republicans were mad because they didn't think of it first. Yeah. Really? They got beaten to the punch. Exactly. McCain-Feingold bill. It was a great bill, but they've always got these little... Lawyers have loopholes for everything. Well, that's why the, the, the friggin' IRS tax code is like three inches thick. Yeah. It's, it's thicker than the Bible. Yeah. And here we are. Here's some Joe uh, Bidenisms. We expanded... No, I'm, I'm going to read this verbatim. This is transcribed. We expanded, they say, well, you know, he stutters. Oh, he's, no, he's not stuttering. He's stupid. The, the guy was never a, a bright guy to begin with, but he's stupid. And so was that laughing gas vice president of his. Uh, we expanded tax credit for every child in a family up to 3000 per child if they're under six years of age. I mean, excuse me, over six years of age and 3600 for children over six years of age. Huh? On Thursday, he went back to Georgia, and did you see that rally in Georgia? Again, with the drive-in. He's wearing a mask outdoors like a complete friggin' moron. And there's, they had people in cars, like a drive-in. So there was probably a whopping 20 people there to see the President of the United States. And speaking of which, I heard Trump's coming back. He's going to start having rallies again. Good for him. Well, I, I won't attend any of them. <laughs> no, me neither, but I'll, use, but I'll watch them, though. They're useless to me. Yeah, they're. I, I like the comedy. <laughs> You're right. Who who could be better at, at comedy than George W. Though he was really something, wasn't he? Oh, good grief! And now he's hawking these stupid ass paintings of his. <laughs> On Thursday, bite me traveled to Georgia, where he misplaced his mask. He promised to increase funding for black colleges. Uh, we're gonna be investing in them and increase and investing in them and increasing Pell Grants. They don't have, they don't have the back and all the money that is, that is, comes from large universities. Okay, you got that? One more time. Okay, I got it. We're gonna be investing them, we're gonna be <clears throat> investing them and increase and investing in them and increasing Pell Grants. They don't have, they don't have the back and all that money that is, comes from large universities. On Friday, he visited an Amtrak station in in Philadelphia. Oh my God! If you get a chance to see that, you have to see it. He is like, 
Now, Amtrak has lost every year since 1971. They've lost millions and millions of dollars, okay? Because they suck. That's why people drive cars, because Amtrak sucks. <laughs> and and uh, it's just bad juju. I mean, it might be nice to take a, a, the railroad along the Pacific Northwest up through Glacier National Park up that way, but you know, yeah, from Washington to Boston and stuff, it, it just sucks. The service is crappy. Anyways, uh, he says, when we were, when I was vice president with Barack, he allowed me to put together a budget for Amtrak, and it had money for high-speed rail at 200 miles an hour from uh, uh, Char, excuse me, Charlotte 1 to uh, another line going from in Florida down to Tampa and another line. If we had moved Cove, then we'd have that tunnel fixed in New York now. The money was there to get it done. What? This guy's our president? Are you kidding me? Every world leader on the planet is like, there is something wrong with this guy. Not only that, he's weak and he surrounded himself with a bunch of friggin' quislings and apologists who hate this country. And believe me, trust me, like I said uh, Sunday, I'm no big flag waver, okay? I've never have been. The only time I ever felt patriotic was one time I saw the sunrise over the Grand Canyon and I'm all like, whoa, whoa, this is awesome. And the, and the other time I felt patriotic was when I was living in Mexico and I, every time I'd come back to the United States, I'm all like, oh my God, I'm so glad to be over that border. Because uh, if you've been to a third world country uh, like Mexico, and don't get me wrong, I love the Mexican people, because Mexico is a very rich country full of very poor people because of corruption, graft, cartels, crime, you name it. Oh yeah, for sure. And uh, anyways, he said, uh, I literally, literally every single day that I was in the United States Senate got all the either the 728, it became the 732, or it got home on it. If I got lucky, I got the I got the metro that the last one left at 6 or 730 coming home. Oh, man. And here's some other ones from the last week. But it beans you how you did most of the middle class folks, you know, who are Caucasian or white. How'd they make it? It beans you? But it beans you how did most of the middle class folks, you know, who are Caucasian or white, how'd they make it? You know that's right. If we are truly whole near the here, you know that's right. If we are to truly whole here, the soul of America. And this one's a good nugget. I'm Jill's husband, as is obvious to everybody. I never get introduced as she's my wife and I'm her husband. Hello? Huh? Hello? <laughs> is there an echo in your head, Joe? Who, me? <laughs> because, of what, because of you, we passed one of the most consequential rescue bills in American history. So what did it do, you know? What did you do? <laughs> Although I was a senator, I was listed as a poor senator in the history, but not in the history, but in the years I was there. It's like, what? I'm totally confused. Yeah, it gets better. Hello, Georgia and the other county back there. <laughs> what? Uh, our grids are vulnerable to storms, hacks, catastrophic, catastrophic failures with tragic results. Titragic results. That's got to be a new word. New energy efficient homes, man manufacturing, manufacturing workers, uh, building nuclear and carbon capture technologies. B -b 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 what? New energy efficient homes, manufacturing, manufacturing workers, building nuclear and carbon capture technologies. Okay then. And people working in the fields we haven't even conceived of yet on forms, on farms, and on factories. On forms? On forms? Speaking of which, they uh, forms. They uh, they had passed a, he had passed a bill or an executive order where uh, black farmers and and colored farmers, I should say, they don't have to pay back their uh, government farm loans, but Whitey does which is blatantly unconstitutional and illegal, but 
that's going through the courts right now. I guess my fourth or fifth year as president, vice president, saying Biden travels 1,000, 1,300,000 1, miles on Air Force One. What? Yep. <laughs> Never mind he used to travel on Air Force Two. That was his private jet for him and Hunter. In the back, they called it the, the, coke, uh, the crack room. Uh, that's it. You just keep going to the back of the plane until you find Hunter, and it smells like burnt plastic. <laughs> my guess... My, I guess my fourth or fifth year as president, vice president, saying Biden travels 1,000, 1, 300,000 miles on Air Force One. Everybody got that? Okay. Yeah, okay. And then when his wife was out at the Navajo Nation, he suddenly began uh, addressing someone out there where his wife had been visiting for much too long. This is what he said. Let my wife come home. She likes the Navajo Nation too much. She keeps being out there. She's been out there for two days. She was out there before. I don't know. You know what I mean? I called her. I said, where are you? She said, oh, I'm staying another day. So, you know, let her, let her come home, okay? I don't want her, you know. That's too far for me to commute. Why was she out there? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> And why was he so upset? Didn't he I mean he knew where she was? Well, at least, yeah, I'll give him, I'll give him credit. At least he knew where she was, right? It's like, gee, whiz, it's not like she disappeared. We don't know where she is. And then, my God, I saw this video of them coming off of the Marine One helicopter, and this woman is on heels. Have you ever seen like a little girl who, uh, little kids who put on high heels? for the first time and they try walking around in mommy's high heels. Yep. That's exactly what Jill Biden looked like. My God, it was unbelievable. It's like, hey, honey, you're almost 80 friggin' years old, all right? Maybe you should try some flats. She's walking like, like this in heels, like trying to look like she's 20 years old in some flower print dress. I'm all like, what the hell? Well, but anyways, if she, if she here fall, we are. If she falls off, then we got another left line. Yeah. Right? I guess, yeah. A Midwestern farmer sue over debt release and Giuliani probe looking at ambassadors firing because you can't fire the lesbian. She's been there forever and ever, by Jesus. And uh, yeah, yeah, if you're black or BIPOC or whatever. And, and that was the thing, too. Uh, they came to Giuliani's apartment with, uh, with a search warrant, and he says, they said, what's on those hard drives there? And he says, that's Hunter's laptop. He says, take it. The warrant says you got to take everything here. Take it. Take it. Take the stuff from Hunter's laptop. Take it. And they wouldn't take it, Philo. It could have been anything on there. It could have been the Russian spy information they've been looking for since 2015. You know, the big, oh, he's Putin's back pocket. He's Putin's puppy. <clears throat> but anyways, here's the racism versus racism. White farmers in four Midwestern states and a law firm, a conservative law firm, are suing the Biden administration over a loan forgiveness program that provides relief to agriculture producers of color. Oh, not just farmers, producers of color. Uh, the Biden administration created the programming for socially disadvantaged farmers and ranchers under the American Rescue Plan Act, or as Biden calls it, the American Rescue Pan. Uh, it pays up to 120% of direct or guaranteed farm loan balances for producers who are black, American Indian, Alaskan Native, Hispanic or Latino, and Asian American or Pacific Islander. Must be a lot of them pineapple growers on Hawaii. <laughs> They're going to get their debts repaid, Philo. Could be. <clears throat> and not to, not to forget the Hispanics and Latinos. Uh, USDA recognizes that socially disadvantaged farmers and ranchers have faced systemic discrimination with cumulative effects and have, among other consequences, led to a substantial loss in the number of socially disadvantaged producers reduced the amount of farmland they control and contributed to a cycle of debt that was exacerbated during the COVID pandemic, said the USDA. During the pandemic, socially disadvantaged communities saw a disproportionate amount of COVID infections, loss of property, hospitalizations, death, and economic hurt. 
Oh, so it didn't affect Whitey, though, so we're going to fight discrimination with discrimination, supposedly. Hey, hey, it's the way it's always been. No, I mean, we had quotas before, but after... After we got the, you know, after we got enough people in the trades and, and, and professions and whatever, it's no longer, I mean, we're over it. We're so over it. Yet they keep digging it up because, you know, like they say, they're using it as a pry bar to keep us uh, fighting amongst ourselves. It's like the same thing they do with the abortion issue. Oh, yeah. They all keep saying, well, we're going to end abortion and Roe versus Wade. And you know what? No one ever takes it seriously no one ever does anything about it yep. so, so next election don't anybody even look at me and say that don't even mention it. during this review we will continue to implement the debt relief to qualified socially disadvantaged borrowers said dirk philpot in an email dirk dirk philpot sounds like some sounds like a a star from an x-rated movie or something huh philo <laughs> Sounds, sounds like the former singer for the German band, Except. Yeah. Which, uh, you know, now, uh, <laughs> Little Miss Cornhole starring Dirk Philpot. <laughs> the plaintiffs allege that because race discrimination is barred under the Constitution, the government must prove that its discriminatory benefit is narrowly tailored and serves a compelling government interest. You think? Oh, here we are, too. Oh, you got to love the way this is written. By Eric Tucker. Uh, Robert, Co now, mind you, somebody's leaking this stuff, and not only that, but they leaked the wrong info, so the New York Times and CNN had to issue massive retractions and say they got the story wrong. It's like, for the past four years, this bonehead has been leaking you bad information, this source, yet you still keep using this source. What the hell is wrong with you people? Well, it's it's an age old thing. It's it's that uh, whatever they can you know if they can sell it, yeah, they're going to use it. If it's salacious enough, it doesn't really matter. It only goes one way too. It seems. Yep. Uh, uh, Robert Costello confirmed via text that a warrant served this week made reference to Marie Yana, y y Yavanovich. Uh -oh. That that's the lesbian uh, ambassador <laughs> who was a central player and the first impeachment. Not only that, but she's like head of the. Uh, LBTGQRU12C3PO uh, 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 civil servants uh, group. So she's like, she's a big cheese, mister. Wow. You can't fire her, buddy. Lindberger? Yeah. <laughs> and so, and who is a central player in the first impeachment case against Trump? Oh, yeah. What happened to that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we had this guy named Eric, uh, oh, that's right, I can't mention his name or the algorithm will pull me off at YouTube. But Eric, uh, he, uh, he uh, just came up with this hearsay stuff, and he d you didn't have any right to face your accuser, and, and yet they took him on his word and rolled with this stupid impeachment. My God, to look back on it now is comical. And the second impeachment, did you notice that too? During the second impeachment, they had everybody, this was even before they, uh, of course, uh, they got vaccines first, all the congressmen and women, uh, but they packed all of them cheek to jowl into the House chamber for the imp big impeachment trial, the second one, after the January 6th insurrection. Uh, but yet when Geezer Joe goes up to give his little state of the onion or whatever the hell it was last month, last week, uh, they only could have 50 people or uh, 200 people in the whole thing, you know. Yeah, that wasn't State of the Union, but it was sort of like it. But it really wasn't the State of the Union address. Um, it was horrible. Yeah. It, the only good thing was Senator Tim Scott, the black guy, this black senator from South Carolina. He came on. He says, look, America is not a racist country, which the following day, Biden and Vice P Laughing Gas VP Harris had both came out and said, well, he's right. America is not a racist country, but we do have systemic racism. Well, wait a minute. Which is it? And this is what killed me because this is scary. OK, if you look in the well of the house on each side of the speaker's chair is a bundle of fascies. OK, with the axe head, the bundle of sticks. Now, it's the same thing that's on the back of a dime. OK. That is the fascist that was never there until the 1930s. You look back on FDR speeches and stuff, 
from the from the uh, well of the house that was never there it just showed up during the period of Mussolini and Hitler so this has been a fascist kleptocracy since uh, 1932 huh and I would have I would have thought with Mussolini would have had pizza yeah yeah at <laughs> least you'd have you know have a couple of pies down there in oven <laughs> I don't know if you ever saw this, but I was watching these documentaries on World War II. Yeah. And when Hitler gave a speech, it really, it scares you. I saw Mussolini give a speech and I couldn't stop laughing. He was, it was so, it was just hilarious. You can turn the sound down. It's just fun to watch. He looked like Curly on crack. Yeah. And I, I mean it. He did. You, you remember when the Stooges did their, their thing about the, the uh, country Moronica? Yeah. They, they had Curly playing Mussolini. <laughs> the resemblance was striking, I'll tell you. <laughs> it's insane. And this is what scared the <laughs> crap out of me, okay? This is what I never want to hear from any president or any politician ever again in my life. He came out and he said, no rights are absolute. And, and, you know, he didn't cite the example, but a couple of weeks ago he said you can't yell crowd in a crowded theater. What? Yeah, yeah. And, 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 <laughs> and Pelosi, about the same time, Pelosi had said you can't yell wolf in a crowded theater. Both of these people, she's had too much Botox too close to her brain, Okay. And he's just naturally burnt toast. Where being the country's run is being run as a geriocracy. But uh, no rights are absolute. What do you mean no rights are absolute? I don't have my constitution with me. Damn it, I left it on at home. But you know, yes, the rights are absolute. That's why they're called the Bill of Rights. Ah! We're back to Giuliani. Uh, the fact that the warrant makes mention of Yanukovych Ko uh, suggests they're attempting to determine whether Giuliani to remove the ambassador was being done because of Trump or the Ukrainians. That matters because federal law requires people lobbying in the U.S. on behalf of a foreign country to register with the Justice Department. Oh, yeah. Half of Washington is lobbying for someone else. Nobody gets busted on a FARA violation, which has been around since the 1930s, 40s. It's called the Foreign, uh, foreign uh, Agent Registration Act. It was actually uh, brought up by what's-his-face there, the guy that Nixon beat, uh, Jerry Voorhees. And uh, it is just insane. Uh, the Podesta brothers, they lobby for everybody. Turkey, this country, that country. Do the Podesta brothers ever go up on a fair of my life? Oh, no. Hunter Biden, he was lobbying while his daddy was vice president. He was lobbying for a Ukrainian gas firm and for China. And took, he took money from $1.5 billion from China took money from Kazakhstan, the Moscow mayor's wife, and he, he funneled it all through Latvia when they say Hunter Biden's being investigated for income tax. No, no, he's being, being money laundering because they washed all this money through Cyprus and Latvian banks till it came out good and clean. And in his emails on his laptop, he's quoted as saying, we have to give 10% to the big guy. Now, who is the big guy, Philo? Uh, Hillary. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, that's right. She's a woman. Oh, darn. Couldn't be I, daddy, I, right? Of course. <laughs> we got to give 10% to the big guy or else. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, the ouster of uh, the, the lesbian was one of the pivotal episodes uh, coming just months after a phone call, which Trump urges a Ukrainian counterpart to investigate Democratic rival Joe Biden and his son Hunter. The investigation had been going on and on, and then we got Joe on video bragging that he withheld a billion dollars in foreign aid to the Ukraine until they fired the guy who was looking into his son's dirty dealings. Oh, jeez. But that's okay. We don't uh, bother look that. He's bragging about committing a crime. Bragging about committing a crime, but we don't. Oh, that's fine. You know, we go after Giuliani and get this. Uh Yavovovovich, a career diplomat who served for decades under both D's and R's and was first appointed by Ronald Reagan, testified in chilling detail during the impeachment trial about a smear campaign against her by Giuliani and others before her firing. 
Every ambassador, every time a new administration comes in, every ambassador is supposed to submit their letter of resignation. That's what happens. But, you know, no, oh no, not, not if you can't, if you're a lesbian, oh no. And here we are. People of <coughs> color get more smog, Philo. What? Oh yeah. Pox, for people of color, are more exposed to air pollution. Uh, here we go well, again. How do you with, figure that? It's environmental justice. Well, because they live in inner cities, and that's where, you know, the most of the diesel fumes and, and, and uh, uh, coal-fired plants, but there aren't many coal-fired plants left. I don't get it. Uh, it doesn't matter how poor or wealthy uh, racial disparities exist for all African Americans and people of color. Uh, they, he's researched there, Mara, hazardous waste dumps, industrial facilities, and uh, air pollution at schools. There's an overall systemic bias against people of color said the author. Uh, the uh, diesel trucks, uh, let's see, fine particulate matter comes from uh, coal-fired plants, diesel trucks, and farms. Uh, let's see, lead to premature death, heart attacks, asthma, while st other studies have shown that non-white people are exposed to more air pollution compared to white people. That's because white people live in the boonies where the air is clean. It's just that, that simple. All the people who live in these cities have crappy air. Come on. It's like uh, the EPA's emissions inventory, over 5,000 types, been to 14 sources, uh, calculating the air quality for racial groups on their residential locations in 2014. Uh, we didn't examine the cause of this. What? When looking at exposure disparities in urban areas, research found a notable exception. Asians are less exposed to particulate matter than average in urban areas in California. Uh, the study didn't examine the cause of this. What? And speaking of which, they're talking about these hate crimes against Asians. Well, who's committing the hate crimes against Asians? Black people. Did you see the latest one, the video, Philo? I did. Is it with the hammer? The girl with the hammer? Yep. Beating the hell out of these two Asian women with a hammer. A black woman. But, you know, it's, it, that's not real racism because, you know, she's black. Black people can't be racist. That's what they keep telling us. <clears throat> I can't take it. I can't take it, man. I had it out with a guy I used to work with uh, at a uh, woodworking shop. Yeah. He was an old Navy guy, and he was spitting and sputtering about, I can't, I can't believe these uh, white, white, white and black intermarriage, interracial marriage. Oh, Christ, that must have been a while ago. 77. Yeah. But, any, but anyways, I looked right at him, and I said, well, is it okay for a white guy to marry an Asian girl? Oh, well, well, that's different. I said, it's interracial guy. I, I shut him right the heck up. <laughs> it's like, yeah. come on. Well, it's a great thing because then you get hybrids, and hybrids like, like mongrels are the best dogs. Look at yours truly. Yeah, I'm, half, uh, I'm half old Yankee and, and half from the old country and Hebrew and God knows what else is thrown in there. <laughs> and here we are. <laughs> Challenges I'm just, I'm just for Biden bender. grow moving forward. Demands on other issues rise as virus worries ease. Now here is a uh, 1.9 trillion dollars that they, was in the last bill. All right. For those of you who don't have enough fingers to count, because we don't have enough fingers to count, <laughs> 1.9 trillion <laughs> is is 1.9. Oh, wait, 1 trillion is one followed by 12 zeros. Okay. That's, almost, that's almost two trillion. Almost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Twelve zeros, people. I mean, the debt was only eight trillion when Bite Me showed up, and now he wants to double it. It's going to be like funny money. The prices have already started going up. It's insane. <clears throat> he proposed, uh, oh, and, and we're going to invest. That's what they call it now, Philo, investing. He proposed $4 trillion transformation of the U.S. economy with plans to rebuild infrastructure, invest in green technology, expand caregiving for seniors, subsidize child care, make pre-K nationwide, and institute a national policy for paid family leave. Pre-K. When do kids get to be kids? Okay. They found well, in research all over the globe that kids need unsupervised playtime with their friends without masks so that they can gauge other people's facial expressions. It's just insane. Oh, no, and, we're going to become a faceless society very soon. Yeah. Mark my words, right now it went, at the hospital I just was in, 
I had three visits to that area, which was Randolph, Vermont. Yep. All three occasions when I left that facility, everybody on the street was masked outdoors. It's crazy. I go down to, uh, just before my operation, the wife and I are going to go to Tim and Doug's and get some ice cream. And what do we see? A big line of 20 people. Everybody's got a mask on outdoors. It's crazy. It's over. This is what I call it, knuck and futz. Yeah, that's it. But here we are. The transformation of the U.S. economy within a, like a five-year plan. What is that called, Philo? Eh? Uh, you know, like, the, where have we heard five-year plans and government-run economies? Oh, gosh, I think I've heard it too often. Oh, I don't know. Communist Russia? Communist China? Government-run economies? Are you kidding me? I mean, do you want the government... <laughs> I, have you ever been? Have you ever been to a DMV in another state, or have to deal with the Social Security Administration or the IRS? Have you ever tried to deal with the IRS or Social Security? I mean, really, do you want these people, uh, bureaucrats, running our economy? Heavens, do we have enough trouble now? Oh, good grief, man! We've got enough trouble now, Steve. Oh God! <clears throat> Here we are. Bruce Jenner, I mean, uh, Caitlyn Jenner, God bless her. Uh, Hannity's going to uh, interview her tonight. And uh, <laughs> Caitlyn Jenner, the former Olympic chairman, says she opposed girls competing in girls. Jenner, a 76 decathlon gold medalist who came out in 2015, told a reporter on Saturday, it just isn't fair, and we have to protect girls' sports in our schools. It was uh, her first comment on the controversial issue since uh, running for office. Well, you got one thing right. Yeah. One uh, it, thing. It's not fair. It isn't fair. And by the way, why are all these guys suddenly wanting to become girls? Is it just because they want to be able to compete and win medals? Yeah, but well, it's it, they're going to break records. That's what, of course, they're going to break records because they're crappy. And the, if they join, do the sport as a guy, they're average at best. But if they say they're a girl, then they're suddenly a standout athlete, Philo. Yep, and there's, there's college money and tuitions involved here, you know? Yeah, oh, and this is from, this is from the same paper, uh, Monday's paper. Matt Getz, okay, Matt Gates, whatever, the guy from Florida, he's a young kid. He doesn't take any PAC money like Bernie, right? He's one of the few that doesn't take the ching from the corporations and stuff. Well, guess what? They've got an investigation. There's been no charges filed, okay? No charges or nothing. But yet they're engaged in this smear campaign. I wonder why, Philo. Well, it's because he's not, he's not, he's pissed somebody off or somebody just out to get him. You think? Yeah. Oh, it's, it's, it's you know, it's just like Nader was the same way. He wouldn't take any corporate money. Oh, Bernie yeah. Didn't take, and oh, look at what they did. They, they, they beat the crap out of these guys, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, how Bernie survived is beyond me. They just, you know, they classify him as nuts, even though even though half the friggin' country wanted him to be president instead of this geezer forget-me-not. Jeez. Don't Unbelievable. get me started. Here we are. When Matt Gates vacationed in the Bahamas in 2018, he was joined by a doctor who donated to his campaign and a former colleague in the Florida legislature. Uh... They were united in their enjoyment of politics, fancy travel, and the company of beautiful women. Oh, my God, not that, Terry. <laughs> Fine dining, beautiful women. The guy's a doctor, and the other guy's a, a you know, a, come on. They got the money. What do they want them to have, fat, ugly hags and bad food? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It'd be better if they ate at McDonald's like Trump. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what began as let's see, let's see. The Bahamas trip is central. Uh, they also had another mutual interest: Florida's 1.2 billion medical weed industry. Oh my God! Uh, it's it's the. Are you kidding me? What about uh, that that wine drinking besotted drunk, the former Speaker of the House, John Boehner? He's all Mr. Weed now. Nobody's after him. Anyways. Uh, the Bahamas trip is a central element of the federal investigation surrounding Getz that has suddenly endangered his political career. Oh, sure, according to these two little reporterettes, you know. Uh, there's no charges. Where's the beef here? 
uh, what began as an inquiry into sex trafficking and whether he paid women and an underage girl in exchange for te- sex has grown into a larger review of public corruption, according to people familiar with the investigation. Again, no name sources, Philo. And we're going to take down one of the few Congress people who doesn't take corporate money and, and thinks for themselves and was, has been pro Trump since 2016. Ha! Huh. Ah, now where's the beef, you say? Where is it? Gates has spoken at least twice on the annual conferences, including an appearance with longtime Trump confidant Roger Stone. Not Roger Stone. Did you know he's got a tattoo of Richard Nixon on his back? Whoa, Roger Stone. Who the heck would do something like that? Roger Stone. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. He's, you know, all right, picture James Carville. You know how James Carville is the raging Cajun for the Democrats? Yeah. And he's finally come out and saying, look, this woke stuff is going to get you guys thrown out of office in two years. I hope so. Yeah. Well, Carville on the Democrat side, you got Roger Stone on the Republican side. They're the same person. It's just, you know what I mean? For all of our viewers, can you explain what woke means? Wolf. Oh, I thought you said woke. Oh, woke, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know what it means, man. It uh, it, it means you're full of crap. <laughs> mm. I, That's what it means. <laughs> Here we are. Two years after his first medical weed law, he sponsored another one, allowing near-death patients to use it in all strengths and doses. Oh, my God. By the time he was in Congress, he instituted legislation that would increase the number of entities that could conduct weed research. No! Say it ain't so! Research? Those darn weeds are in my, my wife's garden already. Guilt by, guilt by character ass- assassination, man. That's it. And here we are. <clears throat> Vermont tackling vaccination barriers. And they talk about mistrust. Well, if this if this vaccines are so great, why are they still under emergency youth authorizations? I'm not, you know, I'm not against vaccinations. You want to take it, be my guest. But you know, the thing's got a the, the, the it's got a 99% survival rate for for an average person, an average healthy person. And uh, I mean, think about it: drug resistant tuberculosis has has only an 85% survival rate. Chances are, if you get drug-resistant TB, chances are 15% that you're going to die. And here we are. Vaccine barriers. Listen to this. This kills me. They have organizations, they get these grant-sucking chair warmers. Uh, it's called AgeWell. Oh, yeah. They're another 501c3. Efforts in the straight are in motion vaccine access, including lack of internet access and mistrust. You're going to love this. Uh, an organization, uh, AgeWell, is an organization that advocates for older Vermonters, and they're not, uh, and they're not online to register. What are you kidding me? Most uh, older people I know have been online since 1995, Philo. I got online in 1998. Yeah, come on, people, wake up. I, I, I mean, I, the only reason I was online because it was a tax write-off for my wife, you know? We could write it all off as a business expense. Uh, this could prove relatively difficult in a spot like Essex County, which has limited broadband and a high pop of over 65 years old. And, uh, and then they got the black people. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, let's see. Vaccine hesitancy among people of color is a national conversation. Oh, it's become a conversation, Philo. Not a problem. It's not, not a an problem. issue. Now it's a conversation. Not a topic. Nope. It, more like constipation, if you yeah. ask me. <laughs> well, have you seen the ads on TV lately? Every other one is for uh, whatever. It's nuts. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Examine vaccine reluctance among black Americans. 35%. Uh, say they definitely or probably won't get vaccinated. You know, the second second gentleman, Doug Emhoff, that's Laughing Gas's husband, came to Vermont. He heard from Irene Carubo Webster, a social worker that helps Swahili speakers and new Americans. 
Uh, she described concerns about the vaccine due to online misinformation and colonization's impact in sowing distrust. Colonization? Has colonized anybody in the past hundred years, Philo? When I was in junior high, the last bunch of the colon colonization went by, for example, it was the Belgian Congo. Oh, yeah. Now it, that's just the Congo. Yeah. And you know, all the, what are they, what is they even talking about here? They're out of their mind. And, and sowing distrust, right? Oh, uh, yes. The word sowing comes from sowing seeds, right? Yeah. Which is where we get the word broadcast also. Mm -hmm. they, they have these, I have a thing in my barn where you put the seeds in a bag and, and you have a crank in front of you and it broadcasts the seeds out. And sowing is spelled S-O-W-I-N-G, right? Yes, as opposed to the other kind, which is fixing cloth. Yeah, yeah, or sewing a dress. Right. Yeah. Well, evidently this reporter, Maliha Syed, okay, well, little Maliha didn't know the difference between sewing and sewing. Uh-oh. Yep, it's sewing distrust. Uh -huh. So anyways, uh, if the virus has resurfaced racial disparities in many different ways, said this uh, Maria Mercedes Avila with the University of Vermont. Uh-oh. There it's, we go. Yeah, many state officials and leaders, it's important to partner with the BIPOC community serving organizations early on. When a public health emergency happens, uh, like with COVID-19, we need to have those partners that established early on to be able to proactively reach communities in a timely manner. Oh, he, here's H. Wells number. You can reach the organization's confidential helpline at 800-642-5119. Call them up. I don't care how old you are. Tell them, I need help. <laughs> I'm wrong with me. <laughs> the older I get, the more Viagra I take. And I wear a mask outdoors, and I wear a condom when I masturbate. And I wear a mask when I'm alone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, here we are. 1945. During World War II, German forces in the Netherlands, Denmark, and Northwest Germany agreed to surrender. Well, you know, it's funny uh, that they mention that because that's what turned Howard Zinn into a pacifist, Philo. He was a bombardier towards the end of the war uh, on, the, on this uh, uh, B-17 bomber or whatever it was, a B-24, right? So all these uh, troops were massed in, in Holland and they were all ready to surrender. So you know what they dropped on them, Philo? Wow. They were all unarmed, and they were just lingering around waiting to surrender. Howard Dean says they dropped these barrels. They had put plywood fins on them, and they dropped barrels of liquid jelly gasoline, napalm. They toasted them alive, and they dropped it from like five or 6,000 feet. Uh, Howard Zinn said he could actually smell it. And that's when he became a pacifist. He came back to the country and went to school and became a professor. But we never mentioned that. No. Nope. No, hell no. No, no, no. 1961, the first group of Freedom Riders went to uh, challenge interstate busing. Good for them. See, those were, that was the generation that got her done, man. Oh, and here's another one. This is, it's like, what? FDA to OK Pfizer vaccine for adolescents. You know, no matter that they don't need it. And it's uh, one of them, uh, one of the studies, I'll read it. Uh, it makes no sense. It says that all of them got the placebo, Philo. It's like, what the hell? I don't get it. Here we are. Initial trials were conducted only in adults. Uh, but Pfizer, uh, and by Pfizer and teens, 16 to 17, so younger teens and children have not been eligible to receive them. But in a more recent trial, Pfizer showed in 2,260 adolescents aged 12 to 15 that the two-dose vaccine was extremely safe and entirely effective. Out of the 16 adolescents infected by COVID, all had received the placebo. None had gotten the active vaccine. So what good was that? Exactly. And what the hell? And what happened to them? Did any of them die? Did any of them get sick? You know what I mean? Of course not, because they were kids. This is just nuts. It's nuts. 
on a two-dose vaccine was extremely unstable and entirely effective. Yeah. Although teenagers generally have mild disease, if they notice it at all, they can get quite ill and pass it to more vulnerable people, even without knowing they're contagious. Oh, yeah, please, please. If you're asymptomatic, your chances of spreading it or of care, having it and spreading it are, are virtually non-existent. And now with the censorship we're seeing on YouTube and Face, uh, Face Fox, F-U-X, uh, it, it, it's insane. Uh, it, you can't say anything bad about it or you'll get shut down. It's insane. I don't get it. Out of the 16 in, in the trial, all had received a placebo. None had gotten the active vaccine. Now, that's another thing. We have this thing called T-cell immunity, where chances are if you've... Uh, you have your own T-cell immunity to viruses like this because there's seven or eight others of them that have been circulating for years. Now, what the hell? Why aren't they testing people to see if, if you've already had it? You know what I mean, Philo? Uh, what do they call that? If you have antibodies. Yes. They should test people to find out if you have antibodies. If you have antibodies, that means you have natural immunity. So, so why are you giving vaccines to people that already have uh, antibodies for it? You know what I mean? More money involved. And oh, by the way, last but not least. Yeah, yeah it's insane. Because think about it, folks. The vaccine industry was a 60 to $80 billion a year industry before the pan pandemic. Oh, last but not least, I'll have to do this one next week. Racist incident. Vermonters speak out. So... A couple of people get the fish eye from their neighbors or somebody asks them where they're from and that's a microaggression Philo it's a microaggression damn it oh yeah sure okay and there's another one too uh, okay last but not least the pain oh the pain the pain Here's another one with a about a black girl I gotta save that for next week it's classic you'll love it once again, you wasted a perfectly good hour of your life watching this stupid show. Mackie, you still there? Mac? Uh, and hopefully we'll see you again next week, inshallah. Good Lord willing, the creek don't rise. So until then, get down on your hands and knees in the men-only mosque. Pray east towards the meteorite in Mecca. And sniff the bum of the guy in the man dress next to you and say, Allahu Akbar! Allahu Akbar! Allahu Akbar! Akbar! And of I course, Deus Magnus Est. Hi, Stinky. You just waking up? <laughs> You're crazy. Yeah.